Hello, Catherine Foley is my name and I'm going to read a chapter from my book Beyond the Breakwater and today's chapter is 32, Nana Muscuri. There was a year in the 70s when Nana Muscuri was famous around the world and we knew all of her songs. I used to sing the one about little Jimmy Brown who lived high in the mountains above the valley. I sang it when I was called up to the mic at the top of the bus once as we wound our way home. We'd left the presentation school gates early in the morning on a school trip to Kilkenny Castle and Dunmore Cave. My sister Miriam used to join in at the chorus and do the tolling bell as it marks out the stages of little Jimmy Brown's life. So she bonged away musically at the precise moments from her seat on the bus. And I'd sing, high above the mountains, bong, bong, she sang, until Mrs. Radley, not understanding the significance of her a cappella singing, frowned and signalled energetically for her to stop. Blushing with embarrassment, Miriam clammed up like a crab shot daggers, dagger looks at our geography teacher and I sang on like a diva. When summer rolled in, we became familiar with Nana Muscuri's famous dark brown shoulder length hair, centrally parted and perfectly coiffed, as well as her thick black glasses, her caftans, her strong Greek accent and her rural background. I learned how she was first discovered. It seemed she was at home helping in the kitchen in her village, singing her heart out when a passing record producer overheard her magnificent voice. It must have sailed out softly through an open window on the evening breeze, stopping him in his tracks. Immediately the story went, he went in to meet this virtuoso and offered to make her a star. The story of Nana's discovery while singing in her mother's kitchen struck a personal chord with me. It seemed magical and yet possible to me, especially when I was doing the washing up or hoovering and feeling that my days were full of Cinderella-like drudgery. I wanted to sing my heart out and experience the dizzy heights of universal adulation and admiration. I dreamed of being asked for encore after encore. There were skylights in all the bedrooms of our house at home and those who passed along the road outside would pass underneath these windows. Although it was more usually frequented by Hearty's cows swaying and pushing as they made their way home to the farm to be milked in the evening, I held out hope that one day someone would pass and discover me. So occasionally, when the hot days arrived and Grecian luck seemed abroad, the sky a blue dome with an odd cloud drifting by, I'd wander aimlessly upstairs to loll in my bedroom, organise my books and sing. Of course, I'd make sure the skylight was open. I'd sing softly at first in order to beguile any listeners who might be passing. And then I would sing molto fortissimo to impress. At times I'd hum so as to sound nonchalant and casual. On those summer days when all things seemed connected and the world was full of possibility, my voice would swell out through the skylight, trilling and rising on each crescendo. I sang a selection of songs by the McGarrigals, such as Foolish You, The Summer I Went Singing and Heart Like a Wheel. I sang Bochelon Ern and Schlieve Gal Gu, on Coolen and on Gertin Ornen. I imagined the music dropping like a blessing onto the fuchsia bushes along the road outside. I heard the cows munching like a sweet counterpoint to my song and I was happy. One day, my father came into the kitchen to tell me I'd received a compliment. He told me that a neighbour on his way home the evening before had heard me singing through the skylight and that he'd stopped to listen. He'd been very impressed, my father said. He said you had a lovely voice. You have a lovely voice. I felt unmasked by the compliment and I blushed to think of him standing underneath the skylight listening. The man who'd heard me 
only lived up the road from us and he was not my idea of a wand-waving impresario. I was not at all excited by the compliment from this dark-haired man with an easy way about him who'd wander by our house, the hint of a gleam in his eye. Suddenly, it seemed too foolish to sing in my bedroom anymore, waiting to be discovered. I vowed to sing in the kitchen from then on and to forget about the skylights upstairs. I vowed to, for, to sing for my mother and myself alone. And whether the window in the kitchen was open to the world or not, well, I would hardly care at all, at all. That's all for today. Thank you. Talk again tomorrow. Bye.